And Jesus, it says, kneels down and starts to write in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Maybe he wrote, where's the man? I think he started writing the names of other women. Mm. And as these Pharisees, who we know were not good people in most cases, yeah. look down, they see the name of their girlfriend in the dirt, and, like, oh. and they leave. <laughs> and they're Jeez. gone. Yeah. Ask the Pastor, the show where we ask Pastor Mike a question from the Bible. It could be a Bible verse, it could be a question about God, or just anything related to Christianity. And people generally are writing in, asking questions, and I have a fresh one for you today, Pastor Mike. So, here we go. Okay. Aubrey uh, writes in and asks, in the Bible, my interpretation of course, she writes, divorce is allowed only if there is unfaithfulness. What about abuse? Not just physical but emotional abuse or verbal abuse, uh, financial abuse as well. What if you've prayed every prayer you could pray for yourself, your husband, your marriage? What if you've changed and they won't? Well, okay, let, let, let's, we gotta answer this question on a lot of levels. Uh, first of all, uh, the Bible, okay, it is true. Jesus says that, uh, that anyone who divorces his wife for any reason other than adultery, mm -hmm. uh, causes her to commit adultery or he commits adultery mm -hmm. as well if he remarries. So Jesus makes it clear that adultery is the only valid reason for divorce. However, he's answering when he does that a question from the, uh, from the Pharisees mm -hmm. who are asking him, um, you know, okay, he, they knew he would say this, something about divorce not being allowed. Right. So they were challenging him and so they were asking him about divorce because they said, but Moses in the law says we can have a divorce, all we've got to do is write our wives a, a certificate of divorce, a letter of divorce, and then you're divorced, and then you can remarry. So the law allowed for it. So up until Jesus, literally, it was kind of just write a letter and say you're divorced, and boom, you're out. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus says no divorce other than in the case of adultery, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get to the Apostle Paul, who the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 starts talking mm -hmm. about divorce, and he says the same thing about adultery, but then he layers into that, if an unbeliever, if you're married to an unbeliever and the unbeliever is willing to stay, you have to stay married. Mm. But if the unbeliever leaves, you're free. Wow. So, so Paul seems to layer in um, uh, abandonment. Um, now, none of them, now I wanna make a couple points here. None of them talk about abuse. Mm -hmm. Uh, because that would not have been a conversation. I, I need to say something that's very h harsh, really, mm -hmm. and um, and it, it should make you glad you live in this era. But at the time that Jesus is speaking and the Apostle Paul is writing, wives, Jesus never speaks to the wives, mm -hmm. necessarily. If a man wants a divorce, a man may do this. Mm -hmm. The law never speaks to the wives mm -hmm. as far as allowing them to make the choice. The choice is always the man's. Paul even seems to indicate that the choice is the man's. Mm -hmm. Although Paul balances it more by talking about women as well in first in first Corinthians chapter seven. None of them talk about divorce, oh, talk about abuse, because in this century, as they're writing and as they're speaking, wives are property. Mm -hmm. And so you could not be you could not be punished for misusing or abusing your property. Mm -hmm. And and so there there really is no biblical mandate on this. Mm -hmm. Now, because of that, many denominations and the tribe I'm part of, the Wesleyans, have made position papers mm -hmm. that take abuse, in, in our case, physical abuse, mental abuse, verbal abuse, and add those things into the list of items that would that would make divorce acceptable. Mm -hmm. Different denominations have taken different approaches on this, but they've allowed for it. Right. And so, um, and mm -hmm. so, you know, I think we've seen instances where that allowance has been abused mm. and misused. Yeah. But I also have seen instances where churches try to force a wife to stay in a marriage 
where she's just not safe. Mm -hmm. That's not the right thing to do either. No. Um, I also, I, 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 had a, I was very close uh, with an, a lady in, in North Carolina. She was old enough to be my grandmother, but we became very close because she was the treasurer of the church, and we spent a lot of time together working on church business. And uh, she had left her husband because it was not safe to be with him because he was an alcoholic, but she refused to divorce him. Mm. But, she, but she, would, she said, I can't live with you, but I won't divorce you. So she moved and she left him. So um, now there are all kinds of ways that people have dealt with this. In the end, what we have to understand that in sometimes you, I'm gonna get in trouble for this, we're gonna get emails. Sometimes it's difficult to make an ancient text speak to a more modern problem mm -hmm. because women, thank God, are no longer considered property. Right. So therefore the whole law of mm -hmm. divorce and remarriage changes because now rather than simply being the man's decision mm -hmm. it's now both sides have the decision yeah. you see the challenge with it there's challenges but i also see where paul says other things that you could layer in here to help with that issue i yes. mean like in ephesians yes. chapter 5 where he's talking about a husband laying down his yes. his life for if, his wife yes i mean if you're laying down your wife your life you're not your hitting wife. her Yes. You know, you're not yes. you're not verbally abusing her or calling her names or doing anything. You're right. You're you should be calling yourself names. Well, and Paul point. Paul over and over again, it, whenever he speaks of marriage, he speaks of I'll use a phrase, mutual voluntary submission to one another. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so and so the oh, this is what the Wesleyan Church has done, and this is what many other tribes that have tried mm -hmm. to speak into this has done is they've looked at just as you said the overarching view of scripture mm -hmm. that says that this kind of abuse just should not exist mm -hmm. and is wrong. Yeah. And, and is clearly a, a violation of what God's expectation of marriage was. Certainly. So I'm not trying to, I, I'm not, I, I don't want to give the opinion that the Bible somehow doesn't effectively speak to this. What I do need to say is there's not one verse you can go yeah, to. Yeah, like a clear yeah. verse you could just point to and say, memorize that, you're good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, in, 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 hmm. so and, and then you, everybody layers in their own take on things, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think that I would... I think that it would be impossible for me to be alone. My personality is such that I would I would not thrive mm -hmm. outside of a marriage. I would yeah. not thrive. And therefore, uh, if we are going to, I've said this before because I've been hit with this, okay, they can divorce, but they can never remarry. To me, that's an unconscionable position. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine, if you're gonna allow for divorce, I can't imagine a scenario where you don't allow for remarriage because I can't imagine having to live that way. Hmm. And so I, I just, uh, you know. Why do you think that was? Why do you think they? Well, because Jesus says, and Paul says, mm -hmm. Paul repeats Jesus and says that if you divorce for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. and then remarry, that's adultery. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. the, the marriage that is considered the, considered the real marriage is the first one. Yeah. And if you're sleeping with somebody else, even if you have a legal, uh, civil document mm -hmm. that says you're married to them, it doesn't change the spiritual reality that this is the connection God views. Mm -hmm. And so the, so I think there's a reality in that. I think there's truth in that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so we the look wrong at reasons, it. the wrong reasons would be, well, I, I just, I'm tired of you. Well, okay, yes. And oh, I'm, I'm just tired of you. We fell out of love. Fell what out of love. What a, or horrible irre 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 That's a whole episode we ought to do. I fell out of love. <laughs> but, um, but you know, the... It, somebody has to ask. Somebody <laughs> has to ask. Okay. But, um, but yes, those would be the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Take, take, take my, my mom. My mom and my dad divorced. Mm -hmm. My mom left him. But it was because he was having an affair. Mm, yeah. So she then remarried. She remarried a man whose wife had died. Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, so you see, she remarried a widower. No issues there. She's in the right here because he committed adultery. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, he committed adultery. He was clearly in the wrong. Mm -hmm. Those are easy, you know. Yeah. Th those are easy. The harder ones are, mm -hmm. especially when you get to verbal abuse. If you're not talking about physical abuse, you're talking about verbal abuse. Verbal abuse is a real thing mm -hmm. and is wrong and is just as sinful as anything else if you're using words to hurt people. But at the same time, how, how does one measure that? Mm -hmm. it, it becomes the challenge for the church. What I believe we have to do as a church is we have to take people where they are mm -hmm. and we've got to look at them where they are and move them from here forward. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything about what you did in your past. 
Yeah. And so we're going to move from here forward. And if, if you got four divorces in your past, mm-hmm. I, we worked with a man one time that was on his fifth wedding, fifth marriage. Yeah. He had four divorces in his past. And probably um, weren't all for the right oh, reasons. Oh, no. I'm sure they weren't yeah. all for the right reason. Mm-hmm. And so he, uh, but what we had to do was work with him from here forward. Here forward. Yes. And that's a good question. That's where I was going to go. It's like, okay, you got somebody in your life now who's part of your church. They've divorced before for mm-hmm. the wrong reasons. How does God view that? When they repent and they put their faith in Jesus, is that sin forgotten too? We have to, I, I believe yes. I do not mm-hmm. believe there's any sin that God cannot forgive. Certainly. What we have to do as a church though, is we have to lean, I say this so often, we have to lean on the grace mm-hmm. of a loving God. Mm-hmm. Our God is very gracious and our God is very loving. And we're gonna have to lean on his grace. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have to lead people to make the right decisions from the time we encounter them mm-hmm. forward. Yeah but we have to lean on grace for everything that was prior. Mm-hmm. Because we do live uh, in the same spot where Jesus is being encountered by the Pharisees and they say, well, Moses allowed for divorce. Jesus' answer to them was, Moses allowed for divorce because you had hard hearts mm-hmm. and you wouldn't hear it. Okay, we're living in that world. Yeah, The world has very hard hearts on this issue. Mm-hmm. Marriage is disposable. I was watching TV last night. I wasn't watching. I want to make it very clear. I wasn't watching. I walked in (laughs) and these people are in my house watching this show. Oh boy. That was there. I suppose there's a show that I've never watched. I've never watched an episode that's called uh, Married at First Sight. Married at First Sight. And they, they were doing a, I don't know, a revisit of people who got married at first sight, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and why they divorced and, and they, they were divorced now. Why they were, okay. Our society views marriage that way. Mm-hmm. Our society views marriage as disposable. The church cannot go there. Mm-hmm. We cannot go there. Mm-hmm. Marriage is a sacrament. Yeah, It's got to be at that level. It's not a sacrament for most Protestants, but not so sure it shouldn't be. It's mm-hmm. that level yeah. of, 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 of a decision. Yeah, what God has brought together, let no man separate. Right. At the same time, I'm not going to, I don't, I can't even imagine a scenario where I look at someone who's divorced and I say, I don't think your divorce is valid. You need to go back to that person. Mm. How, how, how are you going to unra- unravel that? So we have to lean on grace. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, you and I are in the, are in the, um, are in the best case scenario. We're still married to my first wife. Yeah. So not planning on a second. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> you know, so that's where we need, that's where we need to get more people to there. Yeah. <clears throat> and, um, but have a lot of grace because we live in a culture mm-hmm. where better than 50% of the people around us are, are divorced at some point in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. So. There's this, the verse like Ephesians 5 comes to mind, you know, it, it, you're probably pretty safe mm-hmm. if you're acting like that. If you, if you're as a husband talking yeah. to the guys. If we are laying down our lives for the sake right. of our wives um, and making that choice all the time, that's a pretty safe bet, mm-hmm. even if she messes up. And then my mm-hmm. mind just went to this crazy story in the Old Testament. You know where I'm going to go? Go ahead. I can no, see not it. Really. You don't see it? The, don't. the Gomer story? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a crazy story. Yes. And I know it it's is. figurative. It's, it's, it is. It's a real thing that happened, but it's also a, intended right. to be a teaching tool and a big picture, an analogy of how God pursues his people. But... What about situations like that? Like you got, mm-hmm. what's his name? It was Hosea. Hosea shows up at your door. Knock, knock, knock. Hey, pastor, I really got to talk. Yeah, my wife is <laughs> going out with everybody. <clears throat> she's My she, wife knows everybody. She's, I mean, she's, she's basically what yeah, he's saying. Yeah, it's and, on her. And mm-hmm. she's, you know, been adulterous. And, mm-hmm. and, and here he is, and he's committed to her. He's like, no, until. until well, and I'm God done. won't let him out of that. In, the, in, the, in, in, that in that story, yeah. God says, "No, you have to stay," yeah. because it's an analogy of how, of how we as as followers of well, it was the Israelites at the time, but mm-hmm. we are the, the same as followers right. of Christ. We keep chasing after other gods. Mm-hmm. We keep living spiritually adulterous lives, mm-hmm. and um, and yet God still pursues us. Yeah, and so. my brain is doing all these things. I, I, I'm Genesis 15. Mm-hmm. Abram, right, 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 right. God's setting up a covenant with Abram, and he's about to make this big promise. And yeah. the idea was Abram had to had his part to play. He's supposed to pass through the halves. It's weird, I know, but like there's these halves of animals. <clears throat> he has to mm-hmm. pass through, and once he mm-hmm. does that, he agrees to the terms of the covenant. I.e., if you don't do what the covenant says you're supposed to do, you're going to end up like the animals <laughs> that we're walking right. between. Right. And God puts him asleep, and then passes through on his own. Mm-hmm and the covenant's enacted, Abram didn't have to pass through. God's basically saying, 
whether you blow it or I blow it, I've taken full responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right. And God's not going to blow it. <clears throat> not, God's not going to blow it. God's here, Hosea. Yeah. Here's how I think we have to deal with this, okay? Jesus, go back to another New Testament story. Jesus, a woman who's, who's caught in adultery is brought to Jesus, mm -hmm. thrown at his feet. Perfect analogy because they didn't bring the dude. They, where's the man? Yeah, they didn't I think bring that's him. what Jesus wrote in the sand. Well, no, I don't. I think, okay. I think they throw did. her down, and all the Pharisees say, the, you know, the law says we should stone her, which mm -hmm. is true. Mm -hmm. She's committed a capital offense mm -hmm. based on Mosaic law. Yeah. They're not wrong. Right. And Jesus, it says, kneels down and starts to write in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Maybe he wrote, where's the man? I think he started writing the names of other women. Mm. And as these Pharisees, who we know were not good people in most cases, yeah. look down, they see the name of their girlfriend in the dirt, and, they're like, oh. and they leave. And they're Jeez. gone. Yeah. You know, and then he writes another name and looks up as somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what I think. And just Neither just one of us have one. any clue what he, what he wrote. <laughs> Nobody has any clue what he wrote. <laughs> but that's what I see. But Jesus, in that moment, and remember, this woman was caught mm -hmm. in an act that was sinful. Mm -hmm. Likely this was not the first time she's been in that position because mm -hmm. they knew where to find her when they needed an adulterous woman. They knew where to find her. Yep. They brought her. Mm -hmm. So obviously there's a lot going on here. Mm -hmm. And what does Jesus say to her? Jesus says, who condemns you? And she, because they've all left. Mm -hmm. She says, well, no one. He says, then neither do I, pause, go and sin no more. This is how I think we have to deal with this issue yeah. in the church. Mm -hmm. Nobody's condemning you on this right now, mm -hmm. and so neither do I. But starting here, mm -hmm. he, he, starting right here, we're going to raise a mile marker. Mm -hmm. And from this mile marker forward, mm -hmm. it's go and sin no more. Yeah. This, this, this wife you've got now, this husband you've got now, mm -hmm. we're going to now say that's number one. Mm -hmm. that's your, you're now in your first marriage stay in your first marriage. Right. So because we're going to apply grace just the way Jesus did to a sinful situation right there. Hmm. Well, this was a good one. <clears throat> Thank you so much for writing in. And if you have any questions that you would like us to answer, Pastor Mike to answer, then go ahead and send me an email. You got it, Dave at newlife.live. You can also comment right below this video um, and we'd love to hear it. But thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another episode of Midweek at Your House. So what now? There's a whole community with our virtual church whose purpose is to love God and love people better every day. We would love to have you jump into that. Tune in this weekend right here on our YouTube channel for New Life at Your House. There are two services at 9 and 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time where you can know God better through music, teaching, and more opportunities. Don't forget to subscribe and turn those notifications on. We'll see you soon.